All right, in the chat. How many of you watched, even if it was uh, five minutes, of Iowa State-Houston? How would you describe, if you watched that game, Iowa State and Houston? Houston was threatening to blow them out. Like Iowa State, remember, jumped all over Houston in the uh, opening game of the Big 12. was like, what was it, 14 nothing or whatever uh, that we heard yesterday. I mean, what was it, 17-2? to two? I looked at the time. I went, damn, Iowa State might score 20. How many of you watched it, and how would you describe Houston and Iowa State? Um, Scotty, it was a cage match. Really good. I like that. It was scary from Allen. Uh, I watched it all. Uh, I, I just It was a throwback, as Dan Wetzel brought up, of the days when you had uh, the Pacers and the Pistons and the Bulls and others who just beat the hell out of each other. And that's what it was. And it was still good basketball to me. Now, at times it was ugly because it's just just such a, like almost a legal brawl playing basketball. And um, Alan, Houston is beastly. It's a beautiful brawl, according to Scott. Bobby said, backyard brawl. It was just the strong survive. And they may play each other again. Who knows in the Big 12 in Kansas City. But I kind of enjoyed a little bit of that throwback it was still enough where Shed was an alpha, and Iowa State showed some balls too because they kept fighting back. Yeah, it was a great game, and uh, yeah, Jamal Shed's a, a star. He's a guy that deserves a lot more attention than he's he's getting. He's getting some, but I think he's deserving of even more of that. And uh, hats off to Houston for coming in and just standing on business and being that team right out of the gates that said, we don't need any learning curve. We don't need any adjustments. We're just going to be Houston basketball like we have been for years now. And we're going to come in and be in the best league and be arguably the best team in the best league from day number one. And still remains to be seen. There's a few games to go uh, in Big 12 play, although we are getting down to the nitty gritty at this point. But they're ultra talented. They play hard. They've got a terrific coach, obviously, and I don't know, you know, from all the other sports standpoints, what it looks like when we look back on Houston's role in the Big 12, but damn, you feel good about men's basketball. I mean, you feel great about their their transition there and what that's going to be like for the league and its competitiveness moving forward because Texas has their years where they're, they're pretty good to dang good to a little bit above average. Oklahoma's had its moments here and there as well. Not as much lately. Uh, but, yeah, you're, you're going to miss some of them. But I think having Houston, uh, the brand that they are uh, right now, is uh, going to more than make up for that in, in most cases. And so, yeah, that was a, a terrific basketball game. It did get very physical. And I could see where some might have been taken out a little bit of, like, eh, let's dial back a little on that. Um, I know certainly Iowa State fans because you feel like maybe if some more calls would have happened, that it could have gone in your to your benefit maybe, but it could have also worked the other way, I suppose. But both those teams really make the officials work their they asses do. off yeah, because they do. of how they play. Yeah, They're yeah. very similar. Yes, they, they are, and so that made for an interesting little clash and uh, a nice little uh, marquee game last night for, for the league and for college basketball to really sit back and enjoy those two teams. All right, yeah. also last night, go ahead, Paul, on oh, Houston I, and Iowa State. I, yeah, and, and I, we talked about this yesterday uh, when we were talking about Houston, but I mean, I expected them to be good and like, you know, completely contribute. Like, I knew that they were going to pull their weight immediately in the Big 12. Yeah, they weren't going to lose uh, like yeah. middle of the pack type of games. No, no. it wasn't going to be kind of how you, in football, where they came in and it's like, oh, this is kind of a different thing. We need more linemen. Yeah. We need more defensive yeah. linemen. They don't need, like, we need more post help <laughs> yeah, or anything. They, they were ready to go. I am surprised at how successful they have been even above that because I knew that they would be good and they've been better than I thought they would be and I had high expectations mm -hmm. and part of that might be because you know Kansas State not as good as I thought they were going to be or some of the other teams maybe kind of in the middle of the pack weren't as tough uh, as maybe they should have been but that would be taking away credit from what this team has done in that what I felt watching them over the last few years was this is not a team that can score when it wants to necessarily against another good team. They will hold that team down, but if that team goes on a, an 8-0 run in the last 10 minutes, Houston might be screwed because if they're not hitting the buckets, they're not going to win. Now, that's out the window. Kelvin Sampson's fixed those problems, and this is a legit national title team now, more than it's ever been, coming off what will be their toughest schedule 
in 50 years. Yeah. 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 And we mentioned, and I, remember, back to back games against uh, mm-hmm. Iowa State and then 11th ranked Baylor on Saturday. And I think that uh, Houston rightfully gets the first talking points, but Iowa State could go out and win the whole dad game. Absolutely. Thing. I mean, like, oh. Um, TJ's got himself a they've, team. Uh, they've got more than enough ammo to go win the Big 12. they got more than enough to go and, and make some serious noise in the in the big tourney as well. So, yeah, I think you feel just fine about things if you're TJ Osselberger and the Cyclones, and uh, you're both better for that. You're a little bit more beat up, uh, but you are better, um, and you're not going to face too many teams as good a, as Houston, and Houston's not going to face too many teams as good as Iowa State. So, uh, yeah, that was that was a great one, and uh, no, no hanging of heads in shame uh, – uh, being on the losing end of that because I think Iowa State should rightfully feel great about their trajectory right now. Yeah, they both shot threes. Okay, Iowa State actually was 9 of 17. Houston was 7 of 24. Houston had a huge advantage at the free throw line. And at the end of the game, they started to get fouled quite a bit. 30, 24 of 32, uh, 75%. Shed, uh, was it Wilson? Shed, and uh, they just kept like one after another. You know, you start missing every one of those, every 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 other one, and who knows what happened last night. Also in the Big Twelve, Texas with a must win. They got it against Kansas State, and then tonight you have UCF at West Virginia. That game will tip off at six on ESPNU. All three of the games tonight on national television. TCU at twenty third ranked Tech, ESPN two, and then Baylor tonight in Provo against BYU, 11 against 25. That game will be on ESPN. So there we are. Houston now a half-game lead, a full-game lead, I guess, on Iowa State after the win last night. Yeah, uh, TCU Tech ought to be uh, a fun one. Uh, Baylor-BYU could be very, very interesting as well. And, uh, yeah, I mean, UCF and West Virginia – no, it's been a, a rough go of things, really, for for West Virginia for the most part. But um, that ought to be fun. I mean, it ought to be a competitive game, and uh, I think it's just uh, it's cool to see how deep the league is and uh, how many fun matchups you get. So on any given night, I mean, you get a big marquee game like last night, and then turn right around the night and have uh, you know at least a pair of games that you expect to be pretty uh, entertaining and competitive. And uh, going into Provo, that's the part that's a little bit of the wild card, I think, for for Scott Drew and company. But they're sitting there right there. I mean, they're right there if they win tonight if they're they're right there if they win the night and, and they, then they would play houston to get to a tie if yeah. they would if they could win the game saturday yeah, yeah. i mean they would uh they would gain a little if. ground with a win tonight and that's the first thing to take care of but yeah houston's in town on saturday so that ought to be quite the atmosphere i would think at uh, foster pavilion on on saturday for that matchup but you definitely want to roll into that game off a win as opposed to off of a of a loss um i mean i know that Goes without saying, but I just think the the buildup for that one is going to be good regardless. Oh. But it's going to take a little bit of way if you go fall in Provo right before that. So uh, it would be great if they could – sorry, BYU fans – win the night just to make that game on Saturday uh, that much uh, spicier. But, yeah, good uh, good array of games in store. And what a win by Texas. I mean, they, they needed that. Uh, K-State needed that too. And uh, Texas, to their credit, was able to get the job done. Rodney Terry and company, they seem like when they have their backs against the wall, they always seem to have a response. Would I be crazy in saying that? or just No, well, not, they have – let me tell you something. They still their do. Their next two games they still are do. at yeah. KU and at Tech. Right. So that's why last night, other than they just needed to win, man, you have those two staring down at you when you get on the road the next couple of days. So, yeah, but when they – like when they're four and six, they win that game to not yes. go four and seven, vice versa, or to get up close to five hundred. When the priest is getting ready to start reading his last rites, they like mm-hmm. pop up and and get a dunk, yeah. you know, and they they win a game and like okay, no, he's still he's still good, but uh, they've they've played uh, a little too close to to that line, and so yeah, they got to be careful these next two with the the Jayhawks and the Red Raiders, but needed to get that one last night, and they did, so uh, that was good. And for for Kansas State, man, the uh, struggle. Continues. I don't think they're going to make the tournament unless they no. win the tournament in Kansas City. Their no, non-conference they, wasn't very good. Yeah, and they've got to – and if they're going to do that, they need to kind of probably get hot now, like where they start playing well and consistently. Otherwise, I'm not sure if they're just going to turn it on then. The Naquan Tomlin thing I think has kind of gutted their team, but also, you know, as where year one, Jerome Tang – 
you know, he got Keontae Johnson. He got the other transfers that made that guard. team so great. Yeah, they had these great things. You know, Max Aismas went to Texas, you know, and... Crossed 3,000 points. Good for him for a career. Yeah, yeah. Last so, night, yeah. you know, so he, uh, especially during that game last night, and I'm sure that Jerome Tang doesn't do this, but if you're a Kansas State fan, you're looking across, and even though he only had eight points, you're like, well, if that guy was over here, things oh, would be yeah. completely different mm-hmm. in this in this team because then the loss of Naquan Tomlin doesn't hurt as bad. And look, Naquan Tomlin is at Memphis hardly really playing all that much and, and at, doing anything like Memphis sucks. Yeah. They're terrible. They are just and free yeah, fall. Penny's probably the only thing keeping Penny at Memphis is that they love him yeah. in Memphis. But well, yeah, if he doesn't start now, winning, they're, yeah. they're going to love him but, as a player, but yeah. not a coach. And so now they're, they're just, it just didn't work out. So I would I, a bracket cat on the chat earlier when triple option was kind of going on about, you know, there doesn't seem to be a game plan. There's no offense. It's the same criticisms I heard about Scott drew the years where the roster was okay, you know, and you're like, well, I think that has to do with this. And, you know, I know you can maybe question in year two, does he really know how to build a roster or whatever? If you're a fan, I would say, look at what he did last year. They just, for whatever reason, struck out on these guys, whether it was enough NIL money or this or that, I would pause on on throwing the baby out with the bathwater and being disappointed in Jerome Tang. This is just not the roster that he think I think he thought he was going to have going forward, and that's not including Naquan Tomlin leaving. That's he probably thought he was going to get some some better transfers than he got. Yeah, uh, and yeah. and let's not forget Baylor. Uh, they got to go to Provo, and you don't know how the atmosphere, the atmosphere, the altitude could affect you. So you need to start well if you possibly can. BYU's 25th in the country, and they've, they're they 6-6 six and six in the conference and ranked in the top 25. That's the respect for who they've played. And they had Baylor in trouble when they played in Waco. Uh, it's it, I mean, a lot of you, these 5-6 and six and 4 lost teams have had games that could have gone either way. Um, I saw Evan Miyakawa had a stat on the top freshman in the country, the top 20 freshman, Jacoby Walter and Eves Misi are both in his top 20 when it comes to analytics and data uh, with the top freshmen in the country. And both of those guys, and look good to see Jacoby hit some threes in their game this past weekend. I mean, does that really come as a surprise to you? Well, Misi probably is better than they thought, but thank God because obviously Jonathan just can't do much. Jacoby Walter... Uh, started well, and then he kind of went into it like he was there. Well, and and, and, and it like, seems like their guards are starting to sure. come along. But Misi is without question. When I was at the game against who was it Cincinnati? There was a uh, TCU triple overtime game. There was an NBA scout next to me, and I said, "I'm not trying to get in your business, but Misi was playing really well." He goes, "No, he's really, really good." Yeah, really, and he really again, this is his what third or fourth year of organized basketball, uh, and <laughs> so it shows you how much potential he has. I I think the the one of the more impressive things from Saturday's win was Josh Ojanwuna coming out of his shell. Yeah. And he had steals, not like big man steals that are, you know, I'm just tall so I can go out and get this ball. He was stealing balls and running the floor. You know, that that's something haven't really seen from him yet. So if he's starting to hit his stride and you've got two big guys who can rotate through and when one of them gets in foul trouble, you don't have to worry about because – Against West Virginia, Eves Misi got three fouls, yep. probably as fast as a person can get three fouls in a game. Yeah. And they had to sit him on the bench, and Josh came in and did really, really well. Yeah, yeah. I think he kind of uh, started poorly. Maybe early on was okay, and then he kind of – and then Misi just took over that 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 position. He's, he's the dude right there, but they could use Josh, no question. And none, of course, has gotten his stroke down, and maybe Jacoby Walter uh, too. Uh, bracket cat, so you're saying that Tang learned – all of this from Drew, Paul Catalina? <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, I can – everything that he wrote about – Jerome Tank can't coach. Let's start yeah, those uh, – Yeah. Those, yeah. And I for mean, those like, that don't know – Every that, complaint I've yeah. heard from Kansas State Twitter about Jerome Tang, I will – we'll hop in the DeLorean, throw it, throw it up to 88, and we'll go back to 2010, and I can start going through it with you. And then we'll just go year to year until until about 2018, 2019, when the Baylor fans went like, oh, crap uh, – Oh, this guy, he knows basketball. Yeah. Maybe better than I do. Good news. In about 17 years, you'll have a national championship you get to raise <laughs> yeah. up. But after about 10 years of him 
not being able to coach according to most of the public. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's the Scott well, Drew route. Such a, and, such a and, jealousy and, thing, well, too. And, and look, Kansas a State, thing. historically different than Baylor in that routinely, no matter who the coach has been, they've been in the postseason historically, basketball-wise, for longer than Baylor was. Baylor fans, it was so weird because... You know, I, I just remember sitting, I was in the rain in Jacksonville, li- doing my hit on the show and listening to caller after caller say like, we got to fire Scott Drew. We got to fire Scott Drew, you know, and then I'm thinking about like, do you guys know how many times you've been in the tournament before you hired him? Yeah. Like two. So yeah, I just look at the this stats. is the fifth time I've been in a different city in the last five years. So he's Doing it's something pretty, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and the Langston Love injury still lingers. And, of mm-hmm. course, that has a lot to do with what Baylor might do down the stretch. But they have it They have it in front of them with uh, BYU tonight. If they lose that one, then Houston can get up two games or even three games on Baylor. And, of course, now one game up on Iowa State. And let's not forget that, yes, KU hammered Houston in Lawrence. It was just a couple of weekends ago. Craig Smo. 